Okay, we have worked with adding and subtracting fractions that had the same denominator before. So just as a refresh, um, let's look at this problem. We have one-fifth plus two-fifths. So as long as our denominators were the exact same thing, then we would keep that same denominator and then just add the numerators or subtract if, depending on what the problem is. So one-fifth plus two-fifths would equal three-fifths. Okay, this is what we've done before. Now, if the denominator is not the same, then we've also looked at kind of a picture of that and, and saw that we couldn't add these um, on, on the same sort of visual representation. Remember whenever we looked at that uh, one problem that was cut into thirds and fourths and we couldn't really add a third and a fourth very easily because if I were to add a fourth to here, it kind of blocks off part of my problem. So we really can't do that. But we went over talking about least common multiples and we also created equivalent fractions before in the last section. Now these two concepts are going to help us to be able to add a fraction or add fractions together that have different denominators. Okay, if we want to find a least common denominator, which is what that's called, when we want to get a common, something that they have uh, that's the same. This is the same exact thing as a least common multiple that we just learned how to do. So let's talk about this. If we wanted to find the least common multiple of 5 and 3, well remember whenever we started out we'd say okay well we'd have to list out our factors of 3, or I'm sorry our multiples of 3. So that would be 3, 6, 9, um, 12, 15, 18, so on and so forth. And then we'd have to list out our multiples of 5, which would be 5, 10, 15, 20, and so on and so forth. Now our least common of those multiples is 15. That's the first one that they have in common, the smallest one. Now if the LCM, the least common multiple, and the least common denominator are the exact same thing, then looking at one-fifth and one-third, between the five and the three, the common multiple would be 15. So our common denominator for both these problems is also 15. It's the exact same thing. Now we take that knowledge and we say, okay, I want to now create an equivalent fraction. I want to create a new fraction that rather than have a denominator of 5, I want it to have that common denominator which is 15. Well, from what we did before, remember in order to uh, create these equivalent fractions we have to multiply top and bottom by the exact same thing. So if here we have to multiply 5 times 3 to get 15, then we have to do the same thing in the numerator. So 1 times 3 would be 3. And then over here, let's do the same thing with one-third. Let's change that into a fraction that has that common denominator. So I would have to multiply 3 times 5 to get 15, so we have to do the exact same thing to the top. 1 times 5 would be 5. Now we've created equivalent fractions. Rather than say one-fifth, three-fifteenths means the exact same thing. And rather than say one-third, we could say five-fifteenths, and it means the exact same thing. So now, instead of adding one-fifth plus one-third, we can instead add their equivalent fractions of three-fifteenths plus five-fifteenths. And now, because the denominator is the same, we just add them as we've learned to already. The denominator will stay 15 and we will add the numerators. 3 plus 5 would be 8. So when adding 1 fifth plus 1 third, the answer would be 8 fifteenths.